Hey folks, welcome back to the Lone Pine Tarot and or, well of course, welcome to the Lone Pine Tarot if you're new here. I am super stoked for today's reading because, you know, it's either that I haven't done one of these in a long time and or I'm not even sure if I've done this topic before on my channel at all. So, of course, as you can tell by the title down below, that topic is your spiritual abilities and three subtopics from that. So we're going to talk about, well, of course, well, A, which ones do you have? Duh, right? <laughs> but B, we're also going to talk about where they come from. So we might delve into some past life stuff, some things about your family and genetics. And then the third subtopic is, well, why do you have them? So basically, what's the reason? What are you meant to use them for? And or um, is it maybe something to do with your life path in this particular life? So without further ado, let us pick our piles to choose for our readings today. Number ones on the left, we have number 45, Pandora's Gift. For pile number twos, you have literally card number two, Inner Trust. And for pile number threes on the right, we have number 36, Listening for Truth. So, of course, you can always pause on this part of the video if you still need time to maybe look at the cards and see what intuitively pulls you. I always recommend for those of you who are not familiar with Pick a Card Readings, just go with your first gut instinct. That's my best advice to you. But either way, when you've decided what pile you would like read for you today, drop down to the description box and or the top pin comment below the reading. Click on your timestamp there, and I will see you in our chat about your spiritual abilities, what they are, where you got them, and why you have them, okay? See you there. Hello there, my awesome pile number ones. Welcome to your pick a card reading today on the topic of your spiritual abilities. As you recall, the card used to pick your pile was number 45, Pandora's Gift. Gorgeous card. And right off the bat, looking at this card intuitively, I am seeing something to do with sleep or dreams. So that makes me lean towards things like maybe astral projection, potentially things like remote viewing, though I know that's typically done during awakeness versus sleep. But for sure, it's kind of a very dreamy type related ability that's popping out at me first so but yeah let's look at the other cards too before i get too far in the weeds of course we want to make sure everything's on the table but we will unveil your other oracle cards in just a second but as is tradition my pile number ones we're going to pull your tarot cards right now on screen so spirit for my lovely pile number ones could you give me around five tarot cards explaining more about what their spiritual abilities are and where they came from and why they have them thank you Okay, that is maybe four cards that just popped out. We'll see. Four cards. Let's count that for one second here. One, two, three, four. Yep, and then I will pull one more card for you, pile number once. And then we're going to pull that one is the most prominent, so. Okay, let's look at your cards. So, of course, we have Pandora's Gift, and then from Citadel Oracle, we have the cartographer a crossroads exploration so remember what i was just saying i was like i feel like there's some astral projection vibes in here you know astral projection if you're not familiar with it is about exploring out of body through different areas of well the universe basically different dimensions areas of sleep areas of the mind areas of space basically anywhere a spirit can go and i think of that too especially when i look at cartographer also the element here is air so, you know, you think of things being, like, suspended, things being of, like, spirit, because air has always been kind of associated with the feeling of, like, spirit or your soul. And just exploration, too, is something that harkens or is, like, very akin to, well, basically what you do while you astral project. So, yeah, cartographer, beautiful. So, yep, that just kind of just confirms that, what I was saying about astral projection. Let's look at your other cards too, though. Let's see. Elki, you received She Who Nurtures, Colette. Empathy, gentleness, insight. Okay, so maybe empathy implies some empathic ability, which is to the ability to feel other people's emotions, if you're not familiar with that. Also, insight makes you think of all of the different clairs. So there's things like clairaudience, uh, clairvoyance, etc. Um, we'll see, though, if your tarot cards or your other oracle card give us more nitty-gritty into which kind it is, because that insight could imply a lot of different clair abilities. So we'll put that over here. Actually, I might be able to fit all of your oracle cards at the top here today. 
I did move my desk around just a little bit, so looks like it's working out. And then from the Woodland Wardens, you received the Raccoon and the Sycamore Curiosity. I mean, once again, it makes me think of someone who is very exploratory. You might just be, um, in general, a very curious person, pile number ones, because you have so many cards regarding being curious and exploring and uh, someone who is a very active mind and needs a lot to stimulate it. So I know that's not technically a spiritual ability, but that might be part of the reason as to why you are attuned to these spiritual abilities, say astral projection and um, possibly remote viewing, is because you're someone who has an insatiable thirst to know things and explore. You know, you're almost like a spiritual voyager type pioneer, kind of those different words that indicate someone who likes to blaze a trail and someone who likes to really see what's beyond and ask what's beyond. I mean, you might have even felt when you were a kid, pile number ones, that you always kind of knew there was something more than what things seemed, okay? Especially in terms of the spiritual, in terms of... I mean, you might have even, like, astro projected as a child. I mean, you might not have understood 100% what it was, you know, of course, depending on your upbringing and how those spiritual things were talked about. You know, uh, of course, in some families, you know, it's something where... Spiritual things are very well explored by either one or both parents. And then in some other families, uh, those things are not quite as explored. So like I said, some of you, it might have been something very kind of confusing, but maybe it was just normal to you because as a kid, you were like, oh, this is just old Pat. Like, this is just what happens when I fall asleep. I astral project or however, whatever you called it at the time. Of course, maybe you didn't understand that term as a child. But yeah, you're someone who... In general, too. I mean, I wonder, too, because of your curiosity, I think you might almost look at spirituality, too, in a very scientific way. You know, we see that, too, even with um, cartographer here. We have someone, um, there is a compass at the top here, and you think of a compass as a very precise instrument, a very precise tool, and then curiosity, too, of course, makes me think of scientific things. So, of course, you know, scientific uh, ability is not a spiritual ability, but a lot of of the same qualities that add to being someone who is spiritually curious, add to people that are also scientifically curious. Because eventually, once you get down to it, explaining the universe is kind of where eventually science and spirituality will meet, you know, at the end of, you know, when we're more farther progressed, at least in my personal belief, as society. So... That's why I think, too, like I was calling you like a pioneer or a trailblazer is because you're someone who you don't... You, you don't feel like you don't, it's like you don't understand why spirituality and science can't get along. That's kind of what I'm feeling from you, pile number ones, okay? And then, yeah, um, let's unveil your tarot cards. I haven't even gotten to your tarot cards yet, sorry, but so many intuitive things were coming out, so I was like, yeah, I'm going to say them right. So first up from your tarot, we have the Four of Pentacles reversed, okay? That's about, like, letting things free, letting things go. Uh, we'll see what else pops out with that. <clears throat> Excuse me. Then we have the star reversed. Interesting. I just, I keep getting astral projection vibes from you, pile number once. I mean, that is definitely so far your strongest ability I'm seeing here. So uh, number three, we have the ten of wands reversed. Yeah, even like the ten of wands reversed is like releasing a burden and it's just like, oh, I'm just going to leave my body behind and I'm just going to go like around the universe tonight or whatever. I mean, whatever you maybe particularly do in your astral projections if you are already acquainted with that ability. But yeah, you do not let things tie you down. And then number four, we have the four of wands, which is interesting because that is the card of home. Sometimes celebration as well, but home. Always knowing how to find home, which is also part of astral projection. And then... We have the moon, fascinating, the moon, illusions. Yeah, you are, I mean, you have what I call a hammer reading pile, number ones, and my longtime viewers are going to laugh because they know what I mean, but a hammer reading, for those of you <clears throat> not familiar with my own personal terminology, is a reading where, like, a very similar message is kind of repeated, and to me as a tarot reader, that kind of indicates a, a prevalence or a strength of something within the person or the people that I'm reading for. And yeah, I mean, once again, astral projection, especially because we have the uh, the Ten of Wands reversed is like releasing a burden. So I think of like leaving your body kind of. And then same thing too is uh, the moon is about illusions. And when you astral project, things are not always exactly as they seem. 
it's very like I mean it basically is like a dream state right and so yeah and also you think of the moon as like nighttime and astral projection is typically done while you're sleeping you know at night so or during the day if you're sleeping of course but I know sometimes people do astral projection while they're taking a nap but so that yeah number one okay I already said it ad nauseum so I won't repeat it but you know what I'm talking about pile number ones and then yeah, I did talk about remote viewing as well. Um, a lot of the cards that are coming out for that, or for astral projection, are kind of the same that I see for remote viewing. I mean, especially Pandora's gift, because we think of someone, I mean, she's holding a mask, and we think of it as, like, someone looking through different eyes. Um, and two, with the prevalence of the the Four of Wands next to the Ten of Wands reverse, too. It's like... Because the Four of Wands indicates someone staying at home, is how I interpret it. And then the Ten of Wands reverse, so is still, like, letting go of a burden. And then the Four of Pentacles is, like, letting something go. So I think of, especially because remote viewing isn't, like, astral projection where your spirit goes out while you're dreaming. The astro, or remote viewing is, like, you're still in your body, at least, or at least most of the ways that I've... Um, I've heard it described, and so that home makes me think of, like, something that you're able to do even when you're still in your body, of course, being your home. So definitely remote viewing as well. Very interesting pile number ones. And then... Maybe some channeling as well, for some of you, is another thing coming through. And... By channeling, that's like, um, for those of you not familiar, it's like uh, speaking or channeling, literally being a a host for a different entity to speak through you. Um, and it's possible that you do that through, or you'd be highly encouraged to, to try that through, like automatic writing is one suggestion I have. Uh, you could also try just doing it where... You try to channel through meditation, but that's another particular spiritual ability I'm seeing here for you. So, so far we have astral projection, remote viewing, and channeling. I also am seeing intuitively something about dowsing rods, pile number ones. Uh, and dowsing rods are, uh, I don't know, sometimes people use them to water witch or they look for water sources. They're like the two, well, sometimes people do it with like a stick that looks like a Y, but Sometimes people have, like, the two rotted copper ones. I have copper ones myself. In fact, um, too bad I didn't bring them over here. I actually have them in my room with me. But basically, people will use them to either channel spirits or they will use them to water witch. And when you use them to channel spirits, it's like you hold up the rods. And sometimes in ghost shows, they have them. But, um, and then it's, the theory goes, at least, that it, spirits can interact with dowsing rods. So if you haven't tried dowsing rods pile number ones, I would recommend going for that. Um, of course, you know, always be safe, especially if you're doing like ghost hunting, you know, you want to be spiritually protected. You don't want to have anything negative come around with you, but so, yeah, especially because you have a lot of wands as well. Like uh, the most prevalent suit that you have for your reading is wands. So I think of like dowsing rods too. And even like the, the raccoon being on the tree with the branch that kind of looks like a Y. I think that's why I was intuitively drawn to be like, hmm, something with dowsing rods here. Well, even your compass up here on the cartographer is, is like, I mean, obviously it isn't two different stems like dowsing rods are, but it makes me think of, like, following directions, kind of. Mm -hmm. Maybe you even have a really good sense of direction, too, even though that, I know that's not necessarily a spiritual ability pile number ones, but... Yeah, so, I mean, just to summarize, yep, astral projection, remote viewing, channeling, and maybe some dowsing rod ability to, which I suppose that would be mediumship, technically, if you're using it to speak with the other side. So, but if you've struggled with that in the past and you haven't tried dowsing rods, I recommend that for you, pile number ones, okay? Uh, you might also do well with, I'm looking at the star here, one second, <clears throat> excuse me like wa water scrying. Mm. Or like uh, rune, rune casting as well. Something to do with like small objects or using smaller objects for divination. 
So yeah, I mean, some people use bone casting, some people use rune casting, water scrying, uh, tea leaf reading is another one. I would look into alternative div divinatory um, abilities like that for you as well. Pile number one's okay if you haven't already. All right. And then, of course, the other questions I talked about that we should explore are about, well, A, where did these come from? Why do you have them? And what's the purpose of you having these particular abilities pile number ones? Okay, so I'm actually going to look over your cards here to answer those. Um, I'm also going to just take a drink. Apologies for a moment of silence. <clears throat> Well, they're telling me, as for your purpose in having them, you have perhaps a life path lesson about sharing your abilities with others. And I say that because you have the Four of Pentacles, which is about like the energy of giving. Okay. Uh, not necessarily in like... Like you don't have to have a business with this pile number ones where, you know, say, you know, you do... Uh, psychic readings for people and you do it through like astral projection let's just say or you know or channeling um you don't have to have it as a business so it's not giving necessarily in that way though you could do that if you would like to of course but it's sharing it with others for the sake of giving them hope and faith in things okay that's where that star reversed comes from because star reversed is the energy of feeling like oh my hopes have been dashed and I don't have faith in things you know that too and if you do work uh, I know we talked about science earlier if you do work in a scientific field pile number ones uh, for those of you where that resonates you are heavily encouraged, I'm being told, to try to bring some science to spirituality in your field and or at least in any way that you can bring spirituality to the science. So science to spirituality and spirituality to science. Uh, and I know it depends on what circles you're in. I, I mean, I've known scientists that have been open to things like the supernatural and paranormal and spiritual things. But um, <clears throat> like, I think, what was it? Even Tesla, I think, was into that, right? I think he, didn't he create like a spirit box? Quote me if I, or don't quote me, but if I'm, if I'm right or if I'm wrong, comment down in the comment section if you know. But <laughs> I think it was Tesla, yeah. And um, so there are scientific minds that are interested in these things. But, you know, of course, in our modern world, there's a lot of focus on the very physical and material and the rational. You know, we got that from the Enlightenment age, of course. And that did bring a lot of great things like modern medicine. And it brought us things like, you know, an advanced understanding of the universe from a physical perspective, pile number ones. But you're someone who part of your purpose is bringing that uh, helping move that pendulum a little bit further back to a balance between the two because, you know, it seems like humanity for so long in a lot of cultures only had it like the pendulum way over in the spiritual and then now a lot of modern societies are like way over into the physical. And because of your unique insight and ability to tie the two of spirituality and science together together, that's one way I think you're being encouraged to apply your spiritual abilities. So, you know, if you are a scientific minded person, or maybe you even work in a science, <clears throat> you know, consider doing studies on uh, supernatural things, of course, you know, to your ability. I know sometimes you have to get funding for those. And unfortunately, modern, uh, at least people that fund scientific studies or companies that fund those, you know, they might not you might say, oh, let's fund an astral projection study. And they might kind of be like, huh? Uh, but, <laughs> but maybe even in your just your own time pile, number ones, things like that. <clears throat> maybe even an interest in things like, or like near-death experiences proving, you know, that there's life beyond death. Or people's, like... Uh, past life regression experiences. I know there's some science study that's been done on things like that. So you're that type of person, pile number ones, or, you know, even if you're, I know this isn't a career reading specifically, but even if you're interested in, in maybe a suggestion of a career, actually maybe a science would be pretty great for you is what I'm seeing. Cause you have that really sharp mind pile number ones, but yeah, so, you know, inspiring hope and faith in other people, especially people that are very entrenched in the rational material world. That's part of how you are being encouraged to apply your gifts, but <clears throat> also too, like I said, sharing with others. And then releasing burdens, the Ten of Wands reversed, yep. So that is part, I think, of inspiring hope and faith in others. It's also, you're meant to apply these gifts in a way that it relieves the burdens upon other people, okay? 
makes them feel lighter. Maybe that is in giving them hope and faith and things beyond what we can just see as humans, right? And in letting people or helping them, encouraging them to believe in the things beyond what just our limited brains can perceive, right? Um, and then, yeah, Four of Wands in the home. I think of, like, family, too, with the Four of Wands sometimes, or amongst friend groups, providing support and relieving burdens in friend groups with your abilities, okay? And then, yeah, the moon, too. It's just, once again, the moon is illusions, and I, I'm drawn right, right back to that conversation we just had about breaking the illusions of the material or such a heavy focus on the rational material world around us with the moon. What's real and what's not. And even you think of like the dog and the and the wolf, you know, they're kind of two wings of the same bird, right? Spirituality and science. At least that's the way I see it, pile number ones. And so, yeah, you're someone who can see both sides and you walk the line down the middle here between the dog and the wolf or between spirituality and science. Yep, and then too, of course, with Colette, you have empathy. And I think that is just a nurture too. It's just like she says, yeah, she who nurtures. You're, you're supposed to nurture other people too with these gifts and heal them. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that might profess itself in a way of, say, you know, uh, if you do connect well with, say, dowsing rods and connecting with, you know, people that have passed on, that can give comfort to people that are still living related to those people. That's just one example, right? A tangible thing. Yeah. Service-oriented trailblazer is kind of how I would summarize you. Mm -hmm. Scientific-minded trailblazer. Very open-mindedness, or a lot of open-mindedness, I should say, in this. Well, strong third eye, too. Interesting. So I was talking before, too, I think um, you might have some clairs as well. Um, if I had to pick one, I would say probably clairvoyance, something with the, like, things that you can see. Okay, so visions is the, probably the more uh, colloquial term we use, but yeah, a lot of cool stuff in this reading pile, number once. I, you know, and I always love people like you that have that ability to see both realms at once of, you know, believing in, you know, the scientific and rational, but also believing in the spiritual, right? Because I think it takes a very open mind to try to reconcile those both sides of the pendulum. Mm-hmm. Very sharp mind. And then as for where these gifts came from, pile number one. So let's see. I'm not seeing anything specifically with family. Uh, I, I see, if anything, it would be more like your soul family or your soul circle, which, of course, you could have family members in it. Um, I'm drawn to that, especially just because of the four of wands over here. I think there is something to do with the soul circle that you're in or the, the souls you tend to reincarnate with a lot, at least in my personal belief, that you are meant to develop abilities together. So I don't know if there's like even a community group that you go to or will in the future that help uh, tame and train these abilities together. You know, I know some people that are into uh, like paganism will have like a coven or so that's one example of, of working together on things, or it could be, uh, I know there's been groups in the past that have channeled together, and um, other spiritual uh, spiritualist churches out there too, which are more, of course, it's a bit of a Christian slant because it's a church technically, but they do do actual psychic readings in spiritualist churches. So things like that, community groups like that, where you get together and you, especially with people in your soul circle... And that's why you have these abilities or where it kind of came from was because you've been developing it with this soul circle or these abilities with this soul circle for a very, very long time throughout many different incarnations, pile number ones. Yeah. And it's also possible that you have some of this from... I don't see very, very strong star seed energy in this reading, but I do a little bit, just especially because you did get literally like the star card. But uh, Pandora's gift also makes me think of that a little bit. So I don't think you've had like a ton of starseed influence on your abilities, but maybe just a little bit, especially the clairs, like clairvoyance. Um, that's kind of what I'm hearing for you in pile number ones. Yeah. I'm not seeing a ton of family influence on your abilities though, because I know sometimes abilities can kind of pass through genetically. <clears throat> 
well, like I said, that could work or it could tangibly pop up in a family if they're a part of your soul circle you incarnate with a lot, but it's not necessarily a genetic thing for you. I'm seeing pile number ones. Beautiful. Yeah. And just once again, I'm very impressed by your mind. I'm sorry I keep going back to it, pile number ones, but you have a very fascinating mind. You're the type of person that has a really cool brain to pick. <laughs> yeah. And I'm also hearing something about a sister. I don't know if one of your sisters, if you have one, or someone that is a close feminine energy around your age, if not a sister necessarily by blood, has a similar ability to you that you've both kind of talked about or inspired in one another. There's something about that too, a sister or a close feminine energy in your age range. Maybe working with them on developing them and or maybe they're a part of your soul circle that you've incarnated with kind of similar abilities a lot, learning together. I, I keep hearing like they're your study buddy, <laughs> like your spiritual study buddy. That's kind of cute actually, but yeah, so look out for that person, too, if you haven't met them yet. You have a spiritual study buddy out there that's a feminine energy, your age, pile number ones, okay, to help you develop these gifts together. And like I said, probably a part of your soul circle. All right, well, I believe that is all I can see for you today, pile number ones. Though, of course, it doesn't mean that this is a conclusive list. You might have more abilities than what I listed here, but... Those are the things that I've seen for you and why you have them and how you're meant to apply them. So, of course, as always, if that reading was helpful for you, if it resonated, you liked it, please like, comment, and or subscribe to my channel. It just helps the channel out, which helps me provide more readings for both you and others. And as always, I wish you a wonderful rest of your day, and I hope to see you in the next reading, my trailblazing, scientific, spiritual-minded people. Okay. Bye, pile number ones. Hello there, my lovely pile number twos. Welcome today to your spiritual abilities pick a card reading. As you recall, your deck pile leader you chose was number two, inner trust. So right off the bat, intuitively with this card, the main spiritual ability coming forward for me is some sort of, it's either one of the clairs or it's like, I mean, I'm especially just drawn to because it says inner trust, like an inner knowing. Mm -hmm. So I believe that technically is called clear cognizance. So that's at least one spiritual ability popping out right off the bat. I also see something too with like healing, but specifically related to, and it's very odd because usually when we think of spiritual healing, we think of like healing hands and Reiki and energy healing. But for you, it's like energy healing in the way of something to do with music or creativity even though there might not be like a technical word name for energy healing with music or art. But I do see that for you as well, just with your first card. Maybe some clear audience as well, which is like uh, hearing. Maybe that's kind of where the music comes in, is some clear audience. Two, I wonder, were you ever in choir pile number two? Hmm. Something to do with choral music, but we'll, of course we'll put your pile leader over here. We won't focus on just that card. I, I got... um. Some intuitive downloads, though, so I wanted to make sure that I was telling you those things before I continued on. So, of course, as is tradition, we have our oracle cards, but I'm going to draw the tarot cards right away on the screen for you. So, spirit team, for pile number twos, could you give me around five tarot cards that explain their abilities, where they got them, and why they have them? Thank you. Okay, let's pick your cards. Let's see, that was one, two, three, four, and I need one more. So we'll do that one back here, number five. And let's unveil everything together, pile number twos. My musical healer. So from the Citadel Oracle, you received the king. This is the element of fire, control, reversal of fortune. Interesting. Hmm. Control reversal of fortune. 
And LP today is She Who is Wild, Savage, Untamed, Wild, Mysterious. You know, it's interesting because you have the keyword of control in the king, but you have being untamed in Savage. Being wild, breaking boundaries. Uh, could technically indicate astral projection as an ability, but we'll see what else your other cards say. Actually, we're going to put that one up here. And then your wild, uh, or woodland wardens it's called, is the squirrel and chestnut. Preparation. Um, so definitely future sight. I'd see that with the preparation keyword. I was talking about the clairs earlier. Uh, we talked about clair cognizance is like knowing. And that's kind of what I think of when I think of when animals prepare for the winter. It's like an inner knowing they have that, hey, the season is coming and I need to prepare for it. So you might have had situations in your life, pile number two, is where you kind of instinctively, for some reason, you didn't understand. You knew things were going to happen before they happened and you knew to prepare for them. So once again, like I, I said, it was a uh, clair cognizance technically is what that's called knowing for sure hmm this is very very odd but there's something about predicting seasons too which once again is not like there's not a specific term for that but might just mean you're good at predicting timing when it comes to the clairs of seeing the future and hearing the future or knowing predicting timing and let's unveil your tarot cards, pile number two. First up, we have the, you know, it's funny, the uh, pile number one's got this exact card in the same position. The Four of Pentacles reversed, giving freely, interesting. The King of Cups reversed. Once again, literally he's playing like a horn or like a conch shell, so I think of music. Energy healing with music. Number three, the Four of Swords is rest, sleeping. Okay, so astral projection, like I was saying before, with the dichotomy between control and then being free. So astral projection could be another one. Uh, pile number ones were also strong astral projectors. In fact, because you have so many shared cards, if you were also maybe drawn to pile number ones, I would recommend watching that reading as well, pile number twos. But we have the Eight of Wands reversed. Okay, slowness. And the Queen of Wands reversed. Interesting. I get the feeling that maybe uh, at least some of you haven't felt confident enough to explore a lot of your abilities yet. Maybe that's why you were drawn to this reading was because you are just exploring or just entering that stage of being curious about the spiritual. And so you thought, hey, I'm going to view some spiritual ability readings and kind of see where to start. And I say that because the Queen of Wands reversed is like a lack of confidence sometimes is how it manifests. And then too, we even think of with inner trust over here wearing a white veil. You know, we think of like innocence or purity or someone like new to something. Yeah. So if that's the case, pile number two is, well, uh, thank you for watching my video to help you on this journey. Start your journey. So, so far, yep, we talked about clear cognizance, knowing the future. We talked about probably astral projection. Mm -hmm. And then, like I was saying, too, there also is that element of music I was talking about, which, yeah, it can be clear audience and, like, hearing things, right? Hearing uh, bits and pieces. Sometimes it manifests in hearing spirits, right? But it could also be what I was talking about with the energy healing with music, which sometimes, you know, if you if you have been in a choir, like I was asking earlier, pile number two, is there can be healing when it comes to, uh, like, choral music, for example. I'm speaking to someone that was in choir for years and years. It is very spiritually healing to listen to music. And two, I mean, even a lot of spiritual services say, at least my experience has been with uh, Christian choral music, right? Because that's the way I was raised culturally, but... I think a lot of different religions use music to my understanding. So if you have not explored that yet, I would look into music surrounding spirituality as another way or another avenue for you to find an ability of yours. Yeah. Something with music, something with sound. Mm-hmm. Let's see what else. Yep, the Four of Swords is rest. Uh, the Astral Projection, we already talked about that. And then is there anything else? I 
I believe that is it, pile for uh, pile number two, is at least for the types of abilities that you have. But of course, we have two other big questions to ask in this reading, which is, well, where did they come from and why do you have them? And as far as where they come from, I see you have two kings in your reading, literally, well, at least one in tarot, and then you have the king in the Citadel Oracle you received. And when we think of kings, we think of a lot of value placed on your uh, genetics or your genealogy. And so pile number two is I'm almost getting an inkling that you got these abilities, or at least one of them, from a male line in your family. Uh, masculine line. And I want to say it's through a paternal grandfather line that you got these abilities from paternal grandfather. And I want to say they were from a country that had, and I know this applies to a lot of countries, so I'm sorry this is vague, but I want to say it applies to a line that goes back to a country that had red in their flag. That's what I'm hearing for you, pile number two. So look into a line in your family through your, at least a male line, but specifically for some of you, I think it's a paternal grandfather line that goes back to a country that has red in their flag, or maybe they did at the time. Or it could also be, I know, in heraldry sometimes, like uh, like I have ancestors, for example, that were from Europe, and a lot of times certain families had heraldry in their, you know, uh, be it like a clan in Scotland, or be it like a, um, like a, a, a lineage line in, in say, like a, a a noble English family, okay, they would have their heraldry, they'd have, like, their shield coat of arms, right? Um, so look for red in those things, okay, pile number twos. Because I think that's where you get your abilities from, specifically the knowing, the clear cognizance is what I'm hearing. But you might have also had a lot of musicians in your family, and that's why the music is such a strong thing. And so part of the reason you have at least the music-related one, pile number twos, is because it's like you were born to kind of blend the genetic musical talent along with the genetic spiritual talent to almost kind of create maybe even possibly something new in that area. It could be something to do with uh, creating technology that catches audio. So, I mean, you think of like ghost hunting and people that get, they call them uh, EVPs. This would basically get, people might get um, uh, ghost recordings on a recorder. Okay. Like, have you ever seen a ghost show? Uh, someone had to invent that. Someone had to figure out how to do that. Right. And so you might be someone who, if you've not already been inclined to partake in, say, like ghost hunts, just as an example, you don't have to go with this one, but um, studying new ways of recording or audio with the other side, okay? There's something in that area for you where you have the potential to be a uh, pioneer, okay? But yeah, that's why you have that musical ability, though, getting back to the genetic thing is because of that line and the merging of spiritual genetics with musical genetics, okay? I want to say piano, too, for some reason. I don't know if you play piano or someone in your family was well known that played piano or they did it really well. Um, anyways, okay, so sorry, <laughs> I got such a tangent on the music, but uh, I always follow my intuitive paths here because I think that's sometimes where the best insights and readings come out. And then where did you get the other things like astral projection and the cognizance? Like I know we talked about the line with the cognizance, but astral projection, astral projection, I want to say was a, a a female line in your family pile number two. Especially because I'm drawn to Sauvage here. Could be a French line. Technically, a Sauvage is a French word, right? Meaning wild. But not necessarily. Uh, it might be, though, it was a from a line of people in your family that weren't necessarily in, like, they didn't have, like, a city living lifestyle. They lived a little bit more of a rural, wild lifestyle, right? You know, sometimes that means tribes. Sometimes that means, like, rural farmers. But it's a feminine line that you get that astral projection from. Pile number two is okay. Yeah. Let's see. Anything else? I believe that's all I'm hearing for where you got them from. So mostly for you, pile number two, is you got them from family and genetics. Like you have a special, it almost feels like you got a special bloodline going here. 
Like, you're just, like, the perfect, I mean, not that you're an experiment in pile number twos, but you're, like, the perfect cocktail of spiritual abilities that is, like, being kind of tested out, I want to say. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, just the perfect cocktail of ingredients for someone who is kind of just made for these things. But now we're on to, like, but why do you have them, right? Because we talked about what you got, we talked about where you got it, but Why? Okay. Well, we already, uh, we discussed you being kind of a pioneer, maybe something combining uh, music, clear audience, and sound with the other side and spiritual things, right? Maybe even figuring out how to record maybe better EVPs, just as an example with ghost hunting. But two, let's see here. Why? Well, the four of pentacles reversed is about sharing, just like pile number ones had that card. You're supposed to share these gifts with others, pile number twos, Okay. You're supposed to heal with these, especially with the King of Cups reversed. We think of someone who is emotionally wounded or someone who is struggling with their emotions being the cup suit. So you're meant to help people that struggle with their feelings. Okay, so that might even represent in like musical therapy for people. Using music to help them process their feelings, right? Or heal from trauma. Yeah, it's because it's like you're you're a healer, or you're meant to be a healer, pile number two is, but not in the traditional way you think, because when we th say a spiritual healer, we often think of, you know, people with, like, energy healing, like, with their hands, or Reiki, and, like, distance healing, but you specifically are a healer in a very unique way, and I think, like I said, that harkens back to your special genetics, but, yeah, this is just a very unique pile. And I say that in, in a positive connotation, pile number two. And why else do you have your abilities to the eight of wands reversed is uh, slowing down, which I would interpret that to mean, hmm. Sorry, one second, I'm going to ask a question. I want to say it's because you're meant to calm people, pile number two. So that part is part of the healing thing and part of helping others and sharing your gifts. You might do really well to specialize with musical healing with anxiety-related issues with other people. Because we think of the Eight of Wands as it's either a card of movement, of going fast or going slow, and it's like... I, what I'm being told is, like, you have an ability with your spiritual gifts to to help people slow down or move the, the pace or the movement of something. And I think especially it's, like, the, of the mind. And that's where anxiety comes in because it's, like, anxiety often is, like, a mind that's, like, going too fast and it's not, um, like, it worries about things. And it's just, like, you, you help with your gifts or you could if you wanted to to slow the mind down and say, hey, wait a minute, <laughs> don't panic, everything's okay, you know, things like that. And two, I, I almost feel because of this eight of wands reversed pile number two is along with your inner trust. Oh God, even the queen of wands reversed too. You might do really well to profess or use these abilities in making meditations for people. Well, even the Four of Swords talks about that, too, because that's, a you know, literally the card of rest. You, I don't know, you might already make guided meditations, but if you don't pile number twos, I think you would do really well to do that type of video to try to make guided meditations for people. I mean, you could do it in the traditional, you know, like a guided meditation of bringing someone through, you know, like a... Um, an experience, right? Like I think of like the honest guys on YouTube or like a common guided meditation channel, uh, what they do, or even especially with the link to music and choral singing. Uh, some people do meditation videos regarding like, uh, like channeling spiritual singing. Um, I'm trying to think of a popular channel. I, it's slipping my tongue right now, but yeah. And that could be another way you manifest or why you were given these gifts is to share them on like an online platform to help people calm down and reduce anxiety through meditation. Okay. So two, I mean, if you were looking for a YouTube channel idea, try meditation pile number two, because I do see that for you as well as another why or kind of how. Yeah, definitely. Also too, I think you're meant to use these abilities, of course, for other people, 
is a prominent example, but you're meant to use them for yourself as well. And why I say that is because with that Queen of Wands reversed, it's something to build up your confidence pile number twos. You're meant to become a lot more confident in your abilities in this lifetime. Um, I'm thinking from what I am intuitively picking up, you have had these abilities for multiple lifetimes, maybe even in the same family line that we were talking about. And they've been honed over a long period of time through different incarnations and through your bloodline. And so this life is like you recognizing that and you really adapting to that and, and gaining confidence and maybe even being a little bit of a leader in your family going down, passing down these gifts or teaching other family members these gifts. Like I almost see you as like the wise, I mean, you might not be at that age yet, pile number twos, but like the wise, uh, uh, wide, excuse me, I mispronounced, like the wise, sagely person that is like the mentor or teacher figure of spirituality in your family with these gifts, especially if they're as prevalent as I'm thinking. I mean, you might have family members that are like, okay, this spiritual thing is going on. What the heck is this? And what do I do with it? And then they might be able to come to you and say, hey, can you teach me how to use this? Or, um, I mean, like, I know my, my family's kind of like that on one of my family sides where there were prominent people that had abilities that passed down, right? And you know, acted as mentor figures to younger people in my family regarding these areas. And so I kind of see that reflected in your reading as well. Pile number two is kind of similar, like I was saying to my family where, yeah, you're, you're like, I want to say for some reason Yoda is coming up. And I know that sounds really dumb because it's just, I mean, you know, why Star Wars is coming up, I'm not sure. But, but like the mentor wise figure, I think is, is kind of why. So you're supposed to be like the y the Yoda figure for your family, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> and maybe you're even drawn to Yoda and you like Star Wars, but yeah, beautiful. So just to summarize so far, yep, we have astral projection, clear cognizance, which is knowing, clear audience, a lot of stuff with music for some reason, okay, and healing and therapy with that, definitely. Let's see. And yeah, maybe making meditations would be a good thing for you, pile number twos. Mm-hmm. And I believe that is all I see. So as always, pile up number two is thank you for letting me read for you. I, I love doing readings like this. I love spiritual gifts and kind of like deeper themes like this. They're always fun to do. Um, and you've been an especially exciting pile today, especially when we were talking about like the bloodlines and, you know, something about you that's like a perfect cocktail for a lot of these different things coming together through your bloodlines. And so that's always cool to read and see, um, especially to the uniqueness of the music thing going on here is really, really cool. Or like audio. Yeah. I mean, for those of you that's resonating, uh, please let me know in the comments below, like how the music thing pops up in your life. Cause I'm really, really, really curious, but yeah. Anyways, um, we'll leave the reading there. So thank you once again, hope it resonated with you. If you liked it, if it did resonate, please, well, like comment or, or subscribe on the video. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, that just helps me out, which helps me provide more readings for both you and other people that come to Lone Pine Tarot. Um, and as always, I wish you a wonderful rest of your day, pile number two, and I hope to see you in the next reading. Mm -hmm. Bye. Hello there, my beautiful pile number threes. Welcome to your pick a card reading today on your spiritual abilities. As you recall, your pile leader you chose today was number 36, listening for truth. And when I look at this card, pile number threes, the first thing that pops out to me is not necessarily a spiritual ability, but it is something that I believe connects a lot of the reasons as to why you have the gifts you do. And... The first thing that comes to mind for me is that you're somebody that is, you're a very, very odd soul. And I mean that in like the most positive way possible, pile number three. Is you, you almost give me starseed vibes. You're someone who very much so walks to the beat of their own drum. You're someone who, I think you feel maybe a little uh, off living on earth which of course that's probably where the starseed vibes come from, but yeah, you're someone who I, I think you've had a lot of uh, maybe starseed incarnations in your path, your spiritual journey. And so, like I said, that's not a spiritual ability in and of itself, but it's something that ties a lot of the reasons why you have what you do together. And of course, too, with listening for truth, I think of clear audience, right? 
that is hearing things. So oftentimes that manifests in the way of, say, someone hearing spirits, hearing ghosts, things like that. I definitely get a ghost vibe off of this too. So of course, that makes me think of mediumship, which is speaking with the dead pile number three, is if you're not familiar with what that is. Um, and just being very in tune with the dead in general in a very positive way. Two, I, I wonder if some of you even have hobbies related to death. And I know that sounds kind of morbid when I put it that way, but it's like you're interested in... It's like your career is either to do with, like, people passing on your tangible, like, earthly career or you... It's like taxidermy or something to do with, like, death for some reason in, in a positive way, pile number threes. You're someone who is very in tune with that world and someone who is very comfortable with that world and, and doesn't see these things as the dark depiction that society gives them. You see them as a chance to explore the other side of life. And so, yeah, like I said, you're an odd spirit, but I mean that in a very positive way, pile number threes. You're someone who is refreshing, well, number one, and number two... Uh, someone that Earth needs is how I'll put it. Okay, so we'll put that over here like I always do with our pile leaders. And of course, we do have some oracle cards, but I do want to draw your tarot cards on screen, which is our tradition on the channel. So spirit team for pile number three is my beat of their own drum pile. Could you give me around five cards explaining more about their abilities, why they have them and where they came from? I would not be surprised if you got the star card, but we'll see. Thank you, five. You might also have some dream-related things, pile number threes, which is funny because every single pile today, well, of course, we're going to take that one, right? Every single pile today had, like, astral projection, and I almost get that for you, too. Yeah, you might have astral projection-related things, but, of course, we'll see what pops out before I say it conclusively. Let's see, three, four, and number five. Okay, unveiling things. First up, your oracle cards. We have the muse with water generosity and naivety the muse so that could represent spiritual abilities expressed through creative arts you know some people do i'm thinking of some people do like channeling in terms of painting like they'll get inspiration from the other side and they'll paint things with it or sometimes you maybe even with music too i mean we have like a liar here on that particular cup and then too with water being the element of this card i think of like dreams and emotions and could be uh, empathic as well, which is feeling other people's emotions. Connection between souls that way. Yeah. And then too, which is funny, I was just talking about all the death symbolism. We have the pomegranate here, which um, if you're not familiar with Greek mythology, uh, the pomegranate was associated with Persephone and she was the goddess of the underworld, of course, which was the realm of death in Greek mythology. So if you're interested in deities or mythology, Persephone or Hades might be good to look into, but yeah. You are, I want to describe you as my darkest, lightest pile today. Pile number three is, and I know that sounds very strange, but it's like you're someone who, who walks dark places. God, you, you almost give me Luna Love good vibes. You know Luna Love good from Harry Potter? Those of you who are familiar, you're very Luna Love good. That's how I describe you. There you go. <laughs> you're my Luna Love good pile. Okay. Yeah, but like walking dark places with light in mind. Looking at the light side of things that might people might see as dark. Okay, anyways, um, we'll keep going. I, I won't keep on that too long, but... Um, yeah, okay, yeah. She Who Dreams, Isra, Escape, Dreams, Fantasy. Uh, yeah, Starseed, once again. Dreams, Astro Projection, right? Escape, too, makes me think of Astro Projection. Man, every pile today had that. Interesting. I guess we're an astral projection heavy community. I'm I'm very jelly because I've tried astral projection and I'm still working at it, but I haven't succeeded at it yet. So if you have, tell me your experiences down in the comments below. Um, but yes, so we have the last one is Woodland Wardens, the Skunk and Magnolia protection. Protection. Interesting. 
And then I don't know if you've had a family line from the southern part of your country. I know this is a worldwide channel and people are going to be from different countries. Um, my experience with Magnolia is at least here from a cultural perspective in the United States, of course, is the United States South, right? Um, but like I said, I know I have viewers all over the world, so I just think of the southern part of countries in general. Maybe you live in the southern part of your country or your family came from a southern part of a country. Something that's just popping out, and I think that's probably related as to why you have these abilities, because a lot of times they come through genetically, but we'll talk about more in your family in a second. So, yeah, definitely astral projection. Hmm. Okay, we have the chariot. Okay, interesting. Driving forward. Hmm. Then we have the four of wands, which pile number two's also got. <clears throat> Soul circles and groups, okay. But specifically two of the home, which I've started to associate. This is an astral projection or remote viewing card, so. Mm. Number three, we have the Knight of Cups. Uh, are you a water sign pile number three? Mm. Um, anyways, we have, yeah, Knight of Cups taking action with the heart. And then we have Four of Swords. Okay, I what did I tell you is literally the card of rest. You're very similar to pile number two is today as well. There's a lot of um, intermixing between the piles today. Uh, so if you were drawn to pile number two is pile number threes, I would recommend maybe looking at pile number two. But yeah, Four of Swords is rest, which, you know, of course, we think of astral projection because you do it in your sleep, right? Yeah, you are definitely uh, off offbeat in the best way. You are definitely, I mean, strong starseed vibes, strong water sign vibes. And then we have the Ten of Swords, okay. Which, um, once again, that just makes me think of mediumship because the Ten of Swords is often about like being at the end of things, but it also can kind of depict a death of sorts because it's someone being sort of at the end of things, like because they're, you know, they've been hurt. So, yeah, you have, I don't, I mean, I don't know if you're like a hospice nurse or you work with the elderly that are close to dying or you work with, um, like at a funeral home or something. I know, I'm sorry, that's not your spiritual abilities. It's maybe a career, but a lot of what we're drawn to for career is because of things like our spiritual gifts, right? Especially when it comes to things related to death, okay? Um, yeah, hospice nurse, maybe you are, or you are, uh, like funeral homes, taxidermy, mediumship, though, for sure, at least in terms of spiritual ability. So you have a very strong connection to the other side pile, number three. Very much so. And I think that's maybe why I called you offbeat, quote unquote, in a positive way, of course, is because, you know, to... Well, I don't want to say normies because that's kind of condescending, but like, okay, well, we'll just use the word normies. You get it, pile number three. So you're the Luna Love Good pile, you understand. Um, to, to, to normies, we'll use, I mean, affectionately, of course, we're not looking down on them. You know, people might look at the things that you're interested in and the things that you do, especially in terms of spirituality or, you know, if you do have like a lot of death related interests. And they might be like, oh, well, pile number three is kind of offbeat, right? Um, but you're so needed on this earth because, I mean, especially if you do work with the dying, right? Because there's a lot of people that will look into the darkness and they shy away, but you're someone who does not shy away from the darkness. And that's why I was saying you're someone who kind of, you're like the darkness, walking in the darkness to find the light. Big dreamer pile, too. Mm-hmm. So, like I said, uh, to summarize your spiritual gifts so far that I've seen, yeah, definitely a big astral projection. If you have not done it, do it, try it. You're probably really good at it, I guarantee you. Um, and then creativity with spirituality. So we're talking about, like, the Mios. We think of, like, channeling art, spiritual, psychic art. And then same thing, too, with maybe channeling for music, which, once again, maybe you, if you were drawn to pile number twos, look at that pile because they also had a music-related thing. And then... Protection is interesting. That might be asked uh, more about the why you have these abilities. So we'll talk about that later. But yeah, mediumship, astral projection. 
And the chariot I'm really drawn to. Very interesting. Sorry, I'm, I've been silent for a second. I just, I'm getting a, I'm asking questions here. Well, they're telling me the reason why you got the chariot here is because you're someone who is very easily able to walk between worlds. I think because of the, it's the black horse and the white horse here, if you can see that on camera. Walking between opposites, life and death, light and darkness. Okay, literally, I was like, I was just saying, that's why. Okay, well, even even in their chess um, or the Knight of Cups card here, you have chess pieces which are white and black. Oh, even look at your skunk pile number threes. I just realized that too. White and black. There's something with white and black, so it's like opposites. No wonder why you're so like interested in things like that, or you're so good with con uh, like the other side. Black and white. That is fascinating. I don't think I've ever had a reading that had coordinated colors so strongly before pile number threes. But yeah, someone is able to walk the line between. Uh, I'm hearing something about like shamanic related abilities too. So that of course includes other abilities, but definitely look into shamanic practices, of course. Um, especially with all the nature vibes, because we see that even with Isra, but then also the listening for truth where she's got like the seashell to her ear. Yeah. Walking both sides. Sorry, I keep pausing. I'm just like, this is really, really cool. <laughs> this is a really awesome reading pile number three. Thank you for letting me read your cards, by the way. But yeah. So um, anyways, we've established your abilities are, yes, astral projection and the uh, mediumship, right? Potentially music, healing, music, energy related, spiritual gifts, art. And, yeah, walking both sides, shamanic-related things, mm-hmm, was another thing I heard. Okay. So, we know what, right? And now we need to ask, well, where and why? So, let's ask, where did you get these abilities from, pile number three? Well, of course, we talked about the starseed thing at the very beginning of the reading, and so I think, I don't see a lot of family-oriented cards here, but I do see... You have the Four of Wands, and this particular depiction of it is of a group dancing together. And for pile number ones, I saw a very similar theme where it's almost not necessarily your blood family, although it could include your blood family. It's a soul circle related thing. There's a group of people you tend to reincarnate with that have similar abilities as to you, like, or that you do. And you incarnate a lot together or you're kind of, I almost call them like spiritual study buddies is how I put it to pile number ones, where you you learn a lot of these things throughout different lives together and or you kind of work with them in their incarnations together when you live together in certain lives to teach each other and or be like mentor-student type relationships with each other. Or even just people facing similar things, like, you know, say you both asked to project and, you know, that other person or people in your soul circle can talk to you about that, right? Or even if it's, maybe you're drawn to, like, a community setting, too, um, which we'll get to that in the why section of this reading, of course. But just touching on that briefly now, like, you're meant to kind of share with the other people and teach other people, I think. Yeah. So, yeah, I don't, like I said, I don't necessarily see a family blood related thing here for you, pile number three is, though it could, some people in your family might have abilities like you do. I think it's more that you individually as a soul <clears throat> have incarnated with so many people that have had abilities similar to yours, and then on top of that, the starseed vibes, okay, so like you're very, um, you have a very different feeling energy in a good way, okay? Um, unearthly in, in a good way. And so I think influences from starseed lives have created these uh, abilities to incarnate with you in this life, okay, on Earth. Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. And then we also need to talk about the why. 
or how do you apply these? What are you drawn to? Okay, what's the purpose of you having these abilities in this particular life? Okay, well, number one, you're supposed to not walk to the beat of everyone else's drum. You're supposed to walk to the beat of your own drum pile. Number three, it's like I said, you're my Luna love good pile. Okay, you're someone who is meant to be kind of out there in a very positive way. You know, like we were talking about, you're meant to apply these things regarding death, okay? And that can mean with mediumship, perhaps connecting loved ones with passed on loved ones, right? That's one aspect of using those abilities, right? You also have, uh, I mean, even if you're not connecting loved ones with passed on loved ones, it could also be that you're meant to kind of speak about that experience and teach others. I say teacher for you a lot too. Um, maybe teaching others how to do that in mediumship, or maybe even if you are into like ghost hunting, for example, things like that, teaching other people how to do that. Maybe that's even kind of the the group that you work with. If not, you know, say, I don't know, a coven or say you work with like a spiritual group that talks about these things a ghost hunting group, like I was saying, um, but you're definitely meant to share them with others in terms of a student-teacher relationship, I'm feeling for you. You're supposed to teach other people how to do these things, okay? You're supposed to... Also, I think part of it, why you have these abilities, is to make people more comfortable with the uncomfortable things in life, like death, okay? You're meant to make the well, I'll just repeat it. You're meant to make the dark seem light, okay? You're supposed to unveil shadows to reveal the light underneath. And so by saying that, pile number three is it's like these abilities help you lift the mask that most people don't understand about things like that are darker, like death, just for example, again, using that throughout the reading, and make them see it from a different perspective in a more spiritual understanding perspective of, you know, it's not just, you know, your body wastes away and then, you know, clonk, you're gone, right? You can teach people to see it in a way of even, even the beauty of it, even the beauty of death, which I know sounds like, um, well, technically an oxymoron, I think you'd call that, but, and, you know, something antithetical to each other, but yeah, the beauty of death especially for those of you that might be like, say, hospice nurses or taking care of the dying. Mm -hmm. Let's see the other reasons why. I'm also drawn to protection. I know we touched on that lightly before with your skunk and the magnolia. Mm -hmm. And so you... I wonder, pile number three is... The, if you would do well to, if you joined, say, like, uh, just for example, a ghost hunting group, if it might do well for you to use these abilities in terms of protecting people from negative entities while partaking in these activities, because I definitely see a guardian spirit to you. I mean, especially with protection, but even, you know, things like the Knight of Cups is someone that takes action with the heart. And we think of a knight as someone that is very, like, defensive. And even with your shell in Listening for Truth, a shell is something that's very protective, okay? Um, you know, that could manifest in just you being protective of creating a small community of, like, minds and teaching them, right, with that mentor-student role we were just talking about. But it's like you're supposed to protect other people with your gifts, too. Okay? You know, maybe sending, you know, white magic related things or blessings, white light people's way could manifest in healing technically as well. But I think it's more protection in terms of like against negative entities. Okay. Because you are so familiar with the other side, or at least you're meant to be if you're not there yet. Mm hmm. Protecting others. Yep. Anything else here? Sorry, I'm, I have spats of silence, but that's just because I want to make sure I'm getting everything for you, pile number threes. For the most robust and meaningful reading I can give you, right? You could also do well to help um, by protection helping spirits pass on. Okay, like things like, like ghosts, for example, they get kind of stuck and uh, sometimes they need some a bit of a nudging to pass on to the light, right, as we call it. That might be another aspect of working alongside death that would be very 
good for you pile number threes as a way of expressing these abilities. I mean, maybe that's kind of even where the chariot comes from, because it's like driving something forward. Okay, like, you know, <laughs> I just imagine you like going up to a spirit and being like, okay, you can go to the light now. You don't have to stay here on earth anymore, you know, but I mean, obviously it's more complicated than that, but. Mm-hmm. And then as for your astral projection, why you have that, why you're supposed to use it. I think, too, that leans into your Isra of, like, dreams and fantasy and escape. Um, you might have used astral projection as, like, an escapism-related thing if you have advanced in it already by the time you watch this video. But I think, once again, you're meant to connect with others in astral projection and learn on the astral plane with mentors there. And what they're meant to teach you, pile number threes, is... I almost want to say there's things that these mentors in the astral want to teach you that you would then teach other people here on the physical earth plane, is how, I, is how I'm being told to tell you that, so... Yeah. Definitely a Luna Love good pile, right? <laughs> Definitely the coolest pile. Don't tell the other piles I said that, but you're the coolest pile today, okay? That's our little secret. <laughs> um, and of course, I love all my piles and all of my readings, but definitely feel a kinship here with you, pile number three. So I will leave that reading there for us today. So uh, thank you so much for letting me read your cards for you and letting me interpret your spiritual abilities for you. I love doing deep readings like this, and if you liked it and if it resonated with you, please like, comment, and or subscribe to the channel if you haven't subscribed yet. It just helps me out, which helps me provide more readings and, well, both to you and others. Um, and, of course, as always, I wish you a wonderful rest of your day, pile number threes, and I hope to see you in the next reading. Mm -hmm. Bye.